All right, guys, so for right now, I'm gonna show you how to do text on your design. Um, and so basically, if we take a look over, this is the mold that I started designing. Now, let's say I wanna put some text down in the cavity. And so what I would wanna do is I would wanna go ahead and do draw text. Now, you'll notice that there's two options here, draw text and draw text within a vector box. Don't worry about the vector box, we're just gonna draw text. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up my text menu and you'll notice this menu is just like all the others, you're gonna work from the top down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in the text that I want. So now when I come down, I have to choose a font. Now what you're gonna notice is right now I'm selected on true type, which gives me a couple hundred fonts to work from. For engraving, single line fonts are gonna work the best. So it limits me to about 20 or maybe 30 options, but I'm gonna go ahead and just select one of them and you can play around with it and change it. But for right now, I'm gonna try Helvetica. I'm gonna leave my text alignment to the center. I'm gonna leave the text height alone and the anchor I'm gonna leave alone. Basically, I can adjust all of this after I'm done. And so right now, since it's anchored at X and Y zero, it's gonna anchor right up on the top left corner. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and you'll see it pop up here. Now I can double click it and then drag it over into my design. So that's pretty normal. So I can go ahead and close this menu out. Now if I double click on my design, I can do a couple different things. Here's where I like to change my size because I can make it fit and look exactly how I want. I can also, if I wanted to, I could rotate my text around by clicking on those outside buttons. If you wanted to have it upside down or on an angle or whatever the case is, I'm gonna control Z to undo that. So right now I'm just gonna center it left and right. That's my text right there. Now, if I center it up and down, what I want you to notice is it centers uh, up and down on the material, not on the design. So just make sure you know where it's gonna go. So for me, I want my E slide in right down here. I wanna center it left and right. Now that's my text. And I can leave it like that, that's straight text, that's no problem. Um, but let's say you wanna get a little bit more complicated, add a little bit more to your design. You can actually take this text and you can make it a curve. And so there's a couple different ways of doing that, but the way I found, um, and you can experiment, is you have to give it a curve to follow first. So I can't just say, okay, I want you to curve this to five inches radius or whatever. I have to give it something to follow. And so the way I usually do it is I give it a circle to follow. So I go ahead and I create a circle. Now, again, I'm not too worried about all this stuff right over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and create it. It's a quarter inch circle. The center point is right over here, whatever this coordinate was, but I just need to get a circle on there. So now I'm gonna double click, I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna drag it right over here. I'm gonna center it left and right, or actually I'm gonna make it a bigger size first. Okay, because I want to wrap it to a bigger diameter. So let's say something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and center it left and right. Don't worry about it being over here. This circle is just to use a guide or as a guide for the text wrapping and make it to go around the curve. I'm going to delete it eventually. Okay, so now I have my Leiden and I have my circle. And so basically what I have to do is I have to select both of them. And they're both centered on the part left and right because that's where I want it. And so now I have to select both. So I do that by clicking on one, I hold down shift, I click on the other. And so now both are selected. And then I come over here and what you'll see in the create vectors menu is wrap text along a curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, it brings up another menu. Now you're gonna work your way down um, and play around with these different settings. For right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply and see what it does. So right now it puts it on the inside of the circle. Okay, it kind of crunches things up a little bit. Um, and so there's some things I can do to kind of fix that, but I got it wrapped around the curve, no problem. But let's say I want it on the outside of the circle. You got to kind of play around a little bit. And so right here, right, I maintain the text size. I could scale the text to fit the curve and see what that looks like. And now you see it goes kind of crazy because it brings it all the way around the curve. Maybe I bring it back to 28%. Okay. That's looking a little bit better. Maybe I bring it up, all right, I don't like that. I actually like the other one a little bit better. So right about there, I like that. Now I can go and I can say, all right, let me see how it looks if it's on the curve. Oh, that actually looks a little bit better. And keep in mind that curve is gonna go away. I'm just using it for a reference. And then I could do it below the curve as well. And so let's say I really like that. I like how that looks, everything's good to go. Now, if I wanted to, and let's just see what some different things do. You see how it keeps the letters vertical. I don't like that. Okay, so play around with it and see if you can get the different effects that you like. You can change the text spacing. So how it changes the text spacing a little bit. So let's say this is the design I end up liking. 
and I want to engrave this. So I go ahead and close out that menu. What I can do is I can move this down a little bit now because I don't like it uh, so far up. And since it's wrapped at this point, I could delete the curve. And now I just have the text that's there, but it's maintained the shape that I want. So whatever you decide to do, once you have the text made and you want to actually engrave it, what you're going to do is you're going to highlight it, come over to your toolpath tab, and then we're going to use a uh, quick engraving toolpath for the text. So I go ahead and click on this. What we'll see is that I have my tool. Um, it's a V-bit, 60 degree quarter inch tool right there. If it wasn't, I would come into my tool base, my tool database, and I would highlight my V 60 degree quarter inch tool bit. Um, I would calculate my RPM and my feed rate with the calculator. Remember um, from the other videos, you just can't have it that fast for sure. So you're gonna limit that down. Okay, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, I'll change the feed and speed a little bit later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, all right, you're just gonna outline it. You can mess around with the fill, but it's probably not gonna look too good because it's, it's a single line. So I'm just gonna see how it looks. Calculate. At this point, I close out my toolpath. I go to preview toolpaths right over here. It's going to show me the path it's going to take, but that can I actually simulate the cutting as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and preview the toolpath. Now what you'll notice is it's very, very deep because I didn't preview my cavity. So if I preview the cavity around it, we'll see how it actually is going to look. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, if I didn't like how that looked, I could go back into the quick engrave. I left this at 0.14 before because you have to consider my cavity is 0.125 deep. And so if my cavity is 125 thousandths deep, this is really only engraving 15 thousandths because 125 to 140 is only a 15 thousandths difference. Let's say I don't really like that though. I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna go a little bit deeper or lighter. So in this case, I'll go a little bit lighter. So maybe I only want to go 10 thousandths deep. So I do 135, which would be 10 thousandths over. I recalculate. Now, in order to see that change, I actually have to reset my preview and then preview all the tool paths again and see how it comes out. And so I have to redo the cavity just because if I only do the text, it's going to just be very deep along the uh, face because the cavity won't be cut yet in the simulation. Okay, perfect. That's exactly how I want it to look. So that would be it. And so I would just leave this alone. I would go ahead and save my file. And now I'm good to go with the text.